A very interesting vehicle. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine driving down I-4 in this one. There are certain ways you can open a hood with many cars. Right, of There's course. There's only one way you can open a hood with this car. everyone, welcome to Deezerland. Today we were invited to check out the Action Park here in Orlando. It's something to do that is unlike anything we have done before. I'm super excited about it. You can see Mater greeting us right here. Love that. Deezerland, this super large building all around me and even Bond over there. A big thank you to Deezerland and Experience Kiss Me for inviting us out. I'm looking forward to experiencing it today. Let's head on in there and see what's in store. But this is technically still the soft open. So it's still soft open. Okay, yeah. wow. So we're seeing it not fully complete. Yeah. Okay. Kids virtual reality that oh, will wow. be opening up soon. Oh my god. So it's a car shows every month. Is it like set on the schedules or a schedule online? No, we we um, rotate it because we're also entertaining a bunch of other car pretty we pretty much we have a car event, a car meet, car show two, three, four times a week. Really? Um we we're trying to be the Mecca for the car community. So we'll have a bike night, a JDM night, a oh, BMW wow. night. Really? Okay, so how many games are there in total? Over here, depending on the day, usually about 300. Really? Okay. Oh my gosh. Right, right. What would I do with this space? Yeah. Car We've options. got it down That's... and they do gorgeous things with it. Wow. Oh my gosh. So we're seeing behind the scenes here before they uh, even open up this area. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Wow. And we do a dinner show in here. Wow. We do different hospitality, social networking events in here. Unbelievable. It's kind of a blank canvas and a lot of fun. Wow, and truly an incredible event space where you got these older cars, Cadillacs right there. You got these American classic cars all over the place and this super large event space. They can use it as a drive-in movie theater, which I love. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable, like just, Americana that you can find in here. I love, I, I'm feeling sci-fi as I walk in because you can see basically a drive-in movie. There's actually some, some patron holding spots, holding spots. They're not real in some of those cars. Wow. It's the same one from the movie. It's really, wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah, right. I, I mean, of course you put it on us. I mean, this is literally the best idea of a bar. Oh yes. I love all the Bond memorabilia. Wow. Oh my gosh. Which is a nice little precursor to the Bond exhibit. Wow. Wow. Um, 90%, 95% of the things were all screen used. Really? Um, and everything else was made by the same people as red, red carpet or promotional material. So for example, over here we have the 1964 Aston Martin DB5. It has oh all the gadgets. It was movie used. Really? Um, it has the rotating license plates, the tire slashers, the machine guns, Sean Connery's vehicle. We have another one over here that was used in Golden Eye. Oh my gosh. Even the license plate. Yeah. Wow. Even more of a unicorn is this, which is a 2000 GT Toyota. Um, there were two that were made for the movie. They became a convertible because Sean Connery couldn't fit. <laughs> uh, it was the first time that Yamaha and Toyota collaborated. So you have the wood, you have the engine. The other vehicle that doesn't have the gadgets um, from the movie but was screen used is now in the Toyota Museum in Japan. It's Dr. No on one side and you can see the Auric Enterprises logo on this side. Oh my gosh. It was flight worthy. Um, the really? The thing had to be chopped up into a bunch of pieces to be brought into this facility and so that's why you now see the beautiful duct tape. And That's okay. The, Still, yeah. it's it's authentic. It's no longer flight worthy, but hopefully it's here to stay. I mean, yeah. We Where Bond jumped out of the plane, I don't think this is the same one, but I'm not sure. He was pushed out of the plane by Jaws. Yeah, but I was in uh, Moonraker. Moonraker. Okay, so wrong plane, wrong plane. This is Goldfinger. This is Goldfinger. Goldfinger and Dr. No. The Goldfinger, Dr. No plane. Okay, my gosh. This one is kind of neat, though. Yes. It's the ultimate restaurant. In the movie, the Lotus jumps off the bridge and turns into a submarine. Right. They used four vehicles to film that scene. Mr. Desert found the chassis of vehicle number one abandoned in a garage in Miami. 
authenticated it and decided to pay homage to all four. So if you walk around the vehicle, you'll see each one of those four vehicles is represented even with the propellers on the back here. Oh my gosh. Wow. So uh, Bond, Bond fan. fan. Bond, Bond fan. Bond fan. And yeah. somebody else had that proclivity, a, a gentleman in Las Vegas had collected every single piece of memorabilia that the franchise created as souvenirs or even some as movie props. Um, so there are thousands of items in here, estimated about three to five million dollars worth of everything. Unbelievable. There's even busts right there. This is just, and there's a kid's car. There's yeah. a kid's yeah. bond car. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Martini glasses, I love those. So when did Mr. Desert start collecting? Mr. Desert just celebrated his 80th birthday, and I think he's been collecting for about 50, 60 years. Unbelievable. Uh, and a lot of, he doesn't just collect cars, he collects collections. So sometimes he'll go in to buy a vehicle or a certain type of vehicle. Right. And the museum or the collector will say it's not for sale. Right. Um, unless you buy everything, and so he does. <sighs> That is, did they, I have to know, did they drive it in here? So, uh, no, I don't know. Okay, That's a all right. That's question. I would ask somebody else. <laughs> I remember it from the movie. Well, you know, you need skis on your Of course, your course. yes you do. Sure. License to kill, aqua suit. What's the, uh, this is from Goldeneye. I can't remember which scene this is from. E oh my gosh, that you've got Die Another Day um, hovercraft. Mm -hmm. That, is that authentic? Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. You the villain car, you've got the missiles, the, um, the machine gun. Loving odd job next to his car. Next to uh, Goldfinger's car. Jeez. Ah, that's so cool. Ah, from Dr. No. Remember this? How oh, I love this tank here. All you needed to have it do is breathe fire. That is epic. It's hard to describe to you how cool this is. It's a Bond fan. I am just in love with this collection here. Honor Majesty, Secret Service, Diamonds Are Forever, Thunderball, Goldfinger, From Russia With Love, Dr. No. They've, they've all been labeled with their uh, unique movies. I mean, look at the Russia With Love boat. Can you imagine? This is an unbelievable collection, unlike any I have ever seen in my whole life. Wow. Now, is the Bond Cafe here, is this open to the public most yes. days, or? It is open daily. Daily. Usually okay. from about noon until close, or an hour before close. Do they serve um, any, like, Bond? I'm sure they serve they, a vodka martini shake and not serve. They do. In yeah. fact, yes, this whole <laughs> part of the bar is okay. the shake and not serve Bond theme area. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, Marilyn Monroe car walking right past her. We got Chris is our guide here. We're going through the museum here. A very interesting vehicle. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine driving down I-4 in this one. There are certain ways you can open a hood with many cars. Right, of There's course. There's only one way you can open a hood with this car. Right. The hood is the latch. It's in this general area. I understand, I understand, okay. We, oh my gosh, that's enormous. We have I just keep course. going. Is yeah. he just a huge fan of Vespa? I, I don't know. I, 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 he is now. Um, I think he was. Uh, oh my gosh. And each, each country has its own representative. We do have one of the world's largest micro car collections. Yeah, oh my goodness. Wow. Rabbit or something like I can't remember the name of yeah, it. Yeah, we have, um, and I forget all of the different names. Chris may be able to have them. Sure. Got, oh, and I thought that was the end of our Vespa. It's not even close, huh? Oh no. Not even close. Not even close. Uh. And then back, <laughs> and this is when I say we're a work in progress. We are in the process of getting both physical signage as well as audio tours so that as people come through, if they don't have the benefit of a Chris or a Robert or a Corey, our different tour guides, sure. they still understand what, what they're looking at. Oh my gosh, this we is so cool. a random display of Cars Cars. Cars Cars, yes. Um, the ever important Cars Cars. Yeah. But, oh, the Batcave. But now the Batcave is oh a good mix of screen used vehicles, as well as some that were promotional for re replicas for the red carpet. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. This is, this is the, this, okay, so we got this one, which is from the 1989, and then this is, oh, I see, this is, is this an, an original? But these two, that wow. one screen used, and then this one was promotional. Promotional, Africa, okay. Also made by the same person. That is unbelievable. Oh my gosh. I don't think I can describe to you how cool this is if you are a Batman fan. I can't get over this. Oh, and they're really close. We're not, we are not allowed in any way or shape or form to touch this. But this is just incredible, the fact that they keep it so close. And there's the Batcave, and there's, oh my god, even Catwoman up there. That is so cool, man. Look, there's Adam West right back there. Oh my gosh, do you remember this? from the old style. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. Absolutely incredible to see this. It's from a different one of the Batman movies, but I love this one here. Wow. 
I feel like I have to come back for trunk or treat and wear a Batman costume and come in here. That's what I feel like I gotta do. One of these rooms. Yeah. You could have anything from the Gatsby room, 30s and 40s. Um, we have the Chrysler show lounge. So if you get that 50s rack really? vibe. So it's like next birthday party, just come here. And would they move the cars out of the way and make tables or whatever? Tables are already in there. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Wow, that's... A, oh, okay. Set up so you right. be able to do uh, a birthday event or a business that function. Oh, wow, but spooky. Over. That's cool. Course, That's more cool. Of, uh, like Sinatra music in the background, things like of that. Of course. Of course, it'd be catered as well. Right. Uh, we'd provide a bar, music. Right here. There it is. The car there was done by Franklin Roosevelt himself. Re Wait, this one? The V12 right there. Oh, wow. It's got a whopping 150 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Turn of the century race across Europe. Wow. Uh, this was the uh, professor's fates. Uh, these are all screen used. These actually worked. They had smoke screens, oil slicks. The whole thing. It would uh, pop up and down on its wheels. Hide the cradle for both the cameraman and his dog. <laughs> Unbelievable. Are you serious? Yeah, this is it. Wow. Oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. Uh, wow. Look at So Mel Gibson sat there. He did. That is very, very cool. Yes, George Miller, when he finished wrapping up Mad Max, he didn't have the money to pay everybody, so he gave this to one of his mechanics. These were all movie use. Uh, these were screen use here. This okay. red one, and if you notice, it's not high up. That's because it doesn't have an engine or a transmission. It's because there was a background. Part. Okay, uh, okay. This one does have an engine and a transmission, but what makes this one interesting is yeah. how it was used. In the movie Fast and Furious 4, Vin Diesel's driving 80 miles an hour backwards to get her off the truck. Right, I remember. The jumping off the, the gasoline exactly. things, yeah. Only he's not driving at 80 miles an hour backwards. The stuntman's driving at 80 miles an hour forward. Oh, look at that wheel back there. That's the front of the car, and that's the rear of the car. So every every car here is basically for sale? Yes, technically. Now, whether it'll say yes or not, I don't know. That's different, All right. So most I said most Speed of the Speed Racer! Wow! But this is the original season, season 174 uh, Ferrari Daytona that was in season one of Miami Vice. Mm. This can't be a screen use. This? Yeah, the, the DeLorean. Uh, this is used uh, as a uh, promotional, like Doc and Marty drove it to the screenings of two and three. Really? Uh, I get the lights working. I don't have 1.21 gigawatts of power. Right, right, right. Um, Mr. Desert is, is really, really an amazing collection. Oh, Mini Me, wait a minute. Wait. Awesome Powers 3. Roboto Industries. Our bike Yay. collection here is interesting. That's from yeah. a show called Street Hawk. I remember when I was that eight way. years old. That's, that's interesting. This is an interesting piece. 1996, you go into a Taco Bell and you order a Pepsi product. If it says you win, you won this in 1996. Star Wars collectible Wow! Hummer. Wait, that is so at cool. At the time, it was valued at $26,000. It's probably gone up since then. Uh, I would say yes, I would say yes. Only one. Yes. Only one. I saw a strange Pontiac uh, GTO before. I've seen one now. Yes, I've never seen one like this. Look at those seats in there. That is incredible. Look at that whole bench back there. Wow. No, no. This cannot be real from the A-Team. Uh, one of the sun vehicles used in the original A-Team TV show. Wow. Now, the interesting thing about this van, Mr. T's running away from the authorities. Right. Or is it the tires spin and they take off? The only problem is, is this van didn't have enough torque to spin the tires. So that's what this is Pick it up. Pick up the back. Yep, so this tire tire's spin. Oh, cool. There's more. I mean, I can't stop. Inspector Gadget. We know it for sure is from the sequel. We think it may have been from the original as well, because look at the detail on this dash. Oh, my gosh. You seen that, dude? Driving on I-4, you want to get that Gadget Deluxe. Signal. Right. Now you don't have to pull over and wait no. for everybody else. Click a button. Yes. Do you know if this one's street legal? I believe it is. I think it depends on the cop that pulls you up. Right, right, right. Oh my go, God. Go, go, gadget, ticket. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Michael Jackson's Soul Train. So I have uh, done much research <laughs> trying to find a connection between Michael Jackson and this vehicle. I right. I cannot find it, but it is a Paramount licensed vehicle for Soul Train. It was probably used in Promotional. parades, promotions, yeah. and things. So if you ever wanted to see uh, Michael Jackson dressed up like an X Men for some reason, there he is. That's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Wow. And Total Recall. Oh my gosh, no, it's not the taxi from You're Total. A Johnny Cab. Yes. You are kidding. That's so, do you see this? And oh my gosh, Terminator 3. Is that a real screen? The what car? That? Is this the real one from the yeah, car? This is it. Can you believe that? That is un -B All right, so we've got we got Knight Rider, we've got Johnny Cab, and we've got a Terminator 3. Wow. And did she actually is there like a cut in the top where she cut it open? 
Um, I think that was a different. They had more than okay. one for the. Of vehicle, course, of course, know? of course. This is the one that got shot up. Well, yeah, they had squibs probably, and they of course, probably of course. Across. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, we're going under. Oh yes. Oh, I see it. But here's what's fun about this dash. Uh, when this was in season four of Diaper Rider, wow. this dash wasn't here. It had a sticker. They didn't. They didn't fork over the money for a real dash because they weren't doing close-ups of the car. I oh, so this whole thing was just was a flat thing. Was flat. Yeah, this was added on by by whoever purchased the car after the show ended. This is a season oh, one dash. Oh wow! Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yeah, the the Vulture and his friends is still on all this alien tech. Oh he's yes. Driving through the suburbs, Spider-Man can't swing because there's no building, so he's right. running first, Bueller style behind it. That's right. The Shocker shoots the gun out the back, blows the back of the. Wow. How, it's just so recent. How does he have this? Is. That is from Spider-Man Homecoming. Unbelievable. Raiders <laughs> is interesting. This is actually a Dodge that they made to look like a Mercedes by putting a Mercedes sign on it. Wow. Um, Whoa. It's in the scene where he's going after the Ark of the Covenant, this was one of the vehicles that he was chasing. Right. Uh, there was also a movie called Top Secret starring Val Kilmer. It was like his second movie he ever did. It was a Zucker Brothers film. It was a comedy. He was in East Germany. He's going dealing with Nazis. The Nazis are chasing him in this very vehicle. Happens to run into the back of a 74 Pinto and it explodes. But it was also used in this little movie called Raiders of the Lost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's his best, Mr. Bean's beer right there. I don't see a signature. No, I don't. He should have signed it, but this is uh, the Mr. Bean uh, holiday car right here. <laughs> it's awesome. Look at, the, look at the detail. Look at that. It's been kept in such unbelievable condition. This was wow. sitting in a gentleman's garage up in New York for a few days. Was it? He kept meaning to get around to fixing it. Never did. Apparently Look at he passed that. away. Uh, next person came out to help restore it. Desert ended up purchasing it here it sits. Wow. I mean, you could just, it just keeps going. It's like, wow, what do you, wait, wait, before we get to that, before we get to that, what is this? BMW. BMW. Yeah, but, I mean, come on, Chris, wait, 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 wait. You ever, you ever saw Family Matters? Steve Urkel, he oh. had a car like this. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Wow, oh the Amphicar, okay. Yes, this is a 1967 Amphicar, built by Hans Triple. It was the only wow. mass marketed amphibious car built for the public. Wow. Time Magazine said, you'll never have more fun drowning. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Desert has a, uh, a love of mini cars. He does. He wow, does. oh my gosh. So Messerschmitt made planes for World War II. Right, Germans, right, right. Uh, the B-109, I believe. Um, after World War II, they were allowed to make planes, but they had a lot of plane cockpits left over. Ah, the, the so good, good use. So they put these things on scooters and called them cars. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure how well I'd fit in this, though. I don't think I'd put this on I-4 either. I mean, look at, look at the size of it and me. I feel like my shoulders would be a little <laughs> tight in there. But that's cool to know that they weren't allowed to make planes, right, after World War II. So Messerschmitt. The tops, basically, on top of a scooter. I love it. I mean, look at the, look at the, what's this in the middle for? It's the, the sticks in the middle. That's, that's how you turn it. That's, that's the how you drive. Really? You can see this is actually how you drive it. Right there, you turn that's it. That's how you power it. Oh my gosh, those are pedals. I did not even notice pedals right there. Oh, that is awesome. That is so cool. How much does Mr. Desert want for that one? I'm just kidding. Was, um, this Velorex. Is, this, wow. is a Velo this is a micro car. The Velorexes are interesting because they have fabric. Instead of a metal hood. Instead of a metal, yes. It's supposed to be better wind resistance, uh, give it better durability huh. and everything. Oh, this, oh, okay, really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, these were the result of the late 70s, early 80s fuel crisis. Oh. Uh, this one is actually brand new. Wow. This one is still factory fresh. Never been driven, never been sold. Really? It still has the, I found this on the back window. But it, this is the original advertising. Commuter car. You're not going to harm the leather. I, I don't want to hurt anything. It don't work. Wow. Oh my gosh. And this, so this is an electric car. This is an electric car. 40 miles an hour and 40 miles it can go. 40 mile range. 40 yeah. mile range. Yeah. Wow. That, that's actually really not as cramped as you would think. Even though the uh, it says like, was it say 56? It says 60 on the odometer, but I don't think they made any odometers that went just up to 40. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and it, check it out, it, everything is volt meter instead of. That's amazing. It, oh, your, your forward and reverse is this little uh -huh. switch right there. Yeah. Oh, look, yeah, you can see the DC amps right here and there. That is unbelievable. And you can actually see the batteries in the front. The reason for the big bumpers is because the batteries are underneath the bumpers. Really? The oh. Look through the crack, you can see it. They're really huge. Oh yes, I can see them in there. Okay. Yep. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is very cool. There's so much history here. It's oh, actually, here's how you open up the window. Oh, I love that. This is sliding. 
Charge them in. You take your you take your power cord and you plug it right Which, in there. That is ridiculous. That is awesome. Well, Tesla, oh, Tesla, the early early on right here. This now it's got a rear engine. It's at a top speed of 80 miles per hour. Oh, okay, all right. And it's a fiberglass shell. Your bumper is basically a big metal girder. <laughs> and this this is street legal. This is street legal. Yes. So this, is it qualified as a motorcycle or a car? I don't know. Okay. Uh, but you can still find them on the market for in relatively new shape for around 7800 bucks. Wow. Really? But wow. here, check out the interior. you got to duck down, mind, okay. mind the thing. But you can open the door. It's a single seater. Go ahead, slide on in there. <laughs> oh my, I'm a little... Okay, this here. is a leg room up here, so... Uh, You'll be fine. Oh my gosh. Why don't yeah. you sit? That is... That is... Yeah, go ahead, shut the door. Feel claustrophobic. <laughs> you got to really give it a... There you go. Wow. That is very impressive. And then this is the window. Right we here. can't even yep. hear you. Can't even hear you. And feel the, feel the carpet, shag carpet. Oh, yeah. 1980s shag and 1980s leather. And your mirrors are out here on the sides. Oh, yes. What are those little holes for on the side? Oh, uh, those are vents. Vents. You turn them so that air can actually come in. Gotcha, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, instead of AC, I guess. Huh? Yep. Yeah. Exhaust pipe on it and extra side view mirrors. Oh, wow. This oh, guy yes. Has the extra side view mirrors and the extra brake light. Is that going backwards or brake lights coming back? Uh, that's a, this is the back. So. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Yeah. That is unbelievable. And this is the way you store. I mean, look at the, the perfect shape. You I mean, you, you could pick it up kind of and drag probably, it into your garage if you need to. Probably. I'm not going to try to lift no, it. No, 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 no. Actually, I wonder. Wait, here we go. Don't hurt yourself, please, Robert. I won't. Uh, oh my God! You can lift. I, I mean, I'm not going to try. I if I was a little stronger, yeah. you could lift it up. Oh, uh, these are basically. I don't know if they made the. Uh, I don't know if they factory made these or whether they were kits. But I've seen these, and these are just built for speed. We've got a similar one across the way. Wow, that's a small guy. Is that single? No, it's double. But look at the uh, look at the speedometer. Look at the top speed on it. One twenty. Wow. Okay. All right. We're not yeah. messing around here. Nineteen sixty. Look at how far you are off the ground. I mean, your butt is literally <laughs> on touching the pavement. pavement. There. Yeah. This is a little rocket. Wow. Wow. That I is so is, cool. I, so there is a car. <laughs> it's called Bambi. This is not the full size Bambi. This is the kids version. Wow. They, so Messerschmitt and Bambi, they made kid versions of their cars. Car, right? Yeah, Volkswagen. Yeah. This was the people's car before the Volkswagen. Wow. Uh, they make the, it's a it's a single cylinder engine. I mean, it looks like it's going to be big, and then it just ends. Yeah, it's a. Oh, well, here we go. It's got a one cylinder engine. Wow. And it comes with all the tools you need to work on. Oh, that oh, see, that's look at that. Oh, so there's your screwdriver and your uh, your piece for taking off that cylinder. Yeah. Look at this. So this is the Israeli sports cars. Oh, it's, uh, and that one in the back. The wow. That one has five miles on it. Does it really? Really. Basically, it just was taken off the line. Basically. Wow. This is Mr. Desert's kind of tribute room because he's originally uh, from Tel Aviv, Israel. This is also a Saber from Israel. That's the, uh, the name of it's on the window. It's like a, not a Sosalito, a Sermutra. And this is a Corsair Deluxe. These guys are super, super rare. Corsair Deluxe. What makes them so rare? They didn't make them uh, for long. I, I don't think they made a lot of them. Wow. Uh, look at the hood ornament. The hood ornament, yeah. is that, it's got that weird, uh, not quite plexiglass, like, like acrylic. Yeah. Wow. It, it literally is a golf cart, but you can see. Uh, the Duesenberg suits were made from 1977 to 2000. Oh my, okay. Right, Here we so go. One in the middle, that is a, that is a Duesenberg Model A. Jeez. 1928. Uh, so, the Deuce, so the reason for the replicas is after the Duesenberg original company went out of business uh, in the, during the Great Depression in the uh, early 30s, yeah. uh, over the years, other companies have attempted to buy the name and bring back Duesenberg. And, uh, and they went for a little over a million dollars a piece new. They built about two to three a year. Like the pipes on those, yeah. those are all ornamental. Yeah, I wouldn't think that they would be actual exhaust. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the engines on the inside 
I kind of put these akin to like when you're bu when you're building one of those custom high-end desktop computers. Yeah, oh yeah. You get the biggest case possible so you can cram as much yep. hardware in there as possible. Oh my gosh. Wow. It's all just crammed in there. It generates a ton of heat, so they've got all this yeah, the heat you know, all this insulation. These vent types are strictly ornamental. Because they're just they get in here, there's nothing. Oh my gosh. Straight A's. And the uh, the and the um, the radiator cage is actually built into the radiator pack. So this isn't just a hood ornament. Okay. But if you look around the back, it's a mercury gauge for the radiator cap. Oh my gosh, wow. I see it. There's a mercury gauge in the ornament. Yeah. That's genius. And this is basically a limousine. You know, passengers ride back here with their own added windscreen. Right. Wow. Just incredible. Incredible. And these guys are valued at, uh, you know, the high end of six figures. Hmm. Underneath the dash, they actually hide a uh, high-end stereo system, uh, high-end for the 1980s. Oh, of course. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh, that is high-end for the 1980s. That is so cool. Just imagine, like, the boat. That's just so cool. Yeah, but that opens up and the convertible top comes out of it. Does there. it really? Uh -huh. mm. And there's your trunk. That's cool. That's very cool. That's not something you see in many cars. Well, uh, you see it in classic cars. They just strap it to the spare they tires. They strap it to the spare tires because it was the only place to really put a side view mirror. Right, yeah. Because they didn't have any big hubs. Wow. 72 <laughs> of 500 Renoir. Wow. And it's autographed. Right. Uh, majority of lithograph runs, they do low numbers and they're signed. Here's Elvis's car right here as you first walk in. We're kind of going backwards here, but I cannot tell you how cool this is. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. It actually spells Elvis. All right, so never actually driven by the king, but it was made in tribute. That is so, so cool. The cookie coach, what? I want the cookie coach. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. These are all 1950 decade Vespas. Most of them never driven. Never Still driven. Factory fresh. Wow. Plastic on the handlebars, never gassed up, never sat on, original, Wow. And several of them are from, like that. From 1950 up to 1959, I've seen it. So there's probably at least a handful of 57s in there. Yeah. There's That's what happens to vintage tape. It yellows with age. Yep. They don't make it like that anymore. No, they do not. That is amazing. Have never seen sunlight or a butt. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out as we're making our way out of this section. You can see like the Roger Rabbit car right here. I just love it. Absolutely love it. I could literally stay in here all day looking at all these cars. And you can. We've got, we've got passes thanks to Desertland to check it out. We're going to come back a little bit later. But now we're going to try more things to do. There's an arcade. There's bowling. There's go-karting. There's so much to experience. All right. It's time for go-karting here inside of Desertland. I'm super excited for this. We just registered on the computers. And now we're going to make our way get our socks. Apparently for our neck. I'm not 100% sure how that works. And then head on into those carts. I'm so excited. Let's do it. Okay. We're set with our race. Starts in about, I think, 30 minutes just about for a race that we have. David's got a race, it's gonna be fantastic. We're probably gonna get maybe a bite to eat, but either way, it's gonna be super, super cool to be able to capture this pro go-karting. I'm really excited for this. Now, as we're walking around here, don't forget 60, 65% of this spot is open right now. It's still going through soft opening, so it's so cool to see this as it's coming together. Apparently, they're having new things all the time, and these will all be restaurants right here, right by go-karting as you're getting ready. For lunch today, we're at the Bond Lounge. It wouldn't be anywhere else. We got the Philly cheesesteak and the chicken sandwich. Dave and I are gonna split them up. The milkshakes are not available yet because again, soft opening, but they will be soon. Love it, absolutely love it. Our food has arrived. We're gonna take a quick bite. Then we're gonna go go-karting. Go we got the Philly cheesesteak and the fried chicken sandwich. Both of those look super good. Philly cheesesteak and those uh, fries on the side. Really, really interested in how that one tastes. We're gonna split them up. Chicken sandwich, we got the fried chicken sandwich. That one should taste amazing as well. You ready? Let's just take a quick bite and we're gonna go and get to those go-karts. The Philly cheesesteak was really good. I really liked it a lot. We have the uh, chicken sandwich too to try, which we have not had a chance to try yet because we're going go-karting now. Our time has arrived. We'll put the helmet on and give it a try. I'm super excited about it. We're doing the pro course today. Now we're standing here waiting for the briefing. 
The carts are moving around super fast. The uh, very, very kind team members here told me that it would be best if David and I went separately. So David has actually got a separate race than I do, and we're going to kind of time ourselves, see who does the faster time. But David's going to be able to record as I'm going around. You ready for this, Dave? I'm ready. I'm so excited. Pink shirt right there. The end of the boogie. It's the pre-race boogie, in case you're wondering how to get your game going. If you're trying to get those vibes right, it's the pre-race boogie. Telling you if you want to achieve the fastest laps, we've got a racer number three. He's tight on number 27. Here we go, here we go. Full speed ahead. He's got those two racers in action. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, on the next lap, racer number three shooting around the corner. You can see they're gaining on him. He's holding close to second place. There we go, shooting by. Oh, and will he take the lead? Oh, swings past that other driver in that far position. We lost a minus car. <laughs> They're moving fast. And zipping by us now. Race number three in the first position. He's taking a lead, but they're getting on him fast, ladies and gentlemen. That first position waving. He's so confident in his race position. He's just waving to us right now. Rolling with the flow right here. All right, we like it. Whoa! And race number three again in that first position. Moving tight across the outside border. Whoa, there he goes. Around the next bend. And they are parked, folks. All right, what did you think? That was epic. I don't think I've ever been in a go-kart that went that fast with those kind of really tight turns which make room for the next set of guests. That was incredible. Wow. There he is, prepped and ready to go. Perhaps beat my score. I think mine was about 44 second lap, but we're gonna find out together. He is super pumped, as you can tell. You can see David's in a big race now. A lot of people here. Gonna race him. Let's see if David can win. Let's make this happen. Bye, Dave. Woo! There he goes. Turn. There he goes. He made it happen. There he goes. Woo! Woo! The racers are moving really fast. You got to use your brakes on these things because it is a super, super intense track. Here comes David. Car number 15. There he is. There he is right there. Woo! Now this turn coming up is a little bit, oh, where's the horn? He needs the horn, I see. I see this turn. It's a tight one, but he made it. And there he goes. Woo! There he goes, he did it. A great job. Amazing race performance by David. Champion racer, David. You like it? Oh yeah, oh wow. <laughs> yep. After a super intense go-kart race, David and I are now sitting back relaxing, gonna finish off that food, try the chicken sandwich. I love that. That was so much fun. I feel like I've never done real go-karting before before I did this because the speed, you were going much faster than you thought you would. Really quick going around those turns and then you learned after a while that you could, you could hit the brakes and do like a skid into the turn. It, it was so much fun. This is one I definitely recommend when you're here at Desertland. It was fantastic. The pro one, if you can, pro run. Loved it. That chicken sandwich was delicious. We had it to fried. You know, it's really, really good though. The food here is really impressing me. A lot of it is really impressing me. I really like it. We're going to go now to the arcade area. They said we have an arcade ticket, so on our card we're going to use and give it a try. We're here in Excelsior right now. Check it out. It's the axe throwing. This is the virtual one, and then there's a real one on the other side. Oh, wow. So you got the real one and you've got the virtual one. Yeah, and actually at 6 p.m. every night, we're turning this one goes in the glow throw. We, uh, glow and throw. We turn it off. Wow. That's all glow in the dark paint. And a bunch of our axes are wrapped with glow in the dark, right? That's so cool. So if you're here after six, this is all going to be, we're going to dim down all these lights. Yeah. And we've got our uh, black lights over here. You can see the paint is bioluminescent. When it gets really dark, there's still light coming in from the windows. But when it gets really dark, they wanted to demo this for us. You can actually see this is part of our Halloween special activities here at Excelsior. <laughs> Throw the axe and try and hit it right there on that target. Very cool. All right, we're watching some test throws here. Let's see this happen. Master at work. Wow. Oh, see, that's a beauty. Look at that shot. Hey, you can tell you got experience there. Halloween with a little bit of zombies, right? Yes. Yeah, so oh, zombies. Uh oh. Wow. Wow. So that's a direct hit. That's impressive. That's much clearer. 
Very impressive. So Excelsior is doing this as part of the very special Halloween time. For the rest of October, you can find the glow-in-the-dark paint and the zombies on the, uh, the I'm gonna call this the virtual axe throwing, but they're real axes going into real pieces of wood. Very, very cool. It's part of Disneyland all indoors. So when it's raining, yeah, this is a great spot. Now here inside Disneyland, we've got the Pinball Palace. And apparently this is the most number of pinball machines maybe ever. It's, it's some record that they have, just so many of them. You can see they've got Batman and, oh my gosh, Corvette. Oh my, Demolition Man? I have literally never seen a Demolition Man pinball machine before. It's it's pinball galore here inside of this spot. Oh my gosh, Star Trek Next Generation. I'm a huge fan. And wait, is that Last Action Hero? I cannot believe they got a pinball machine for this. That's so impressive. So many modern machines here and so many to play, but David and I found this back room. It's tough to see with that light, but it's called Stern or Stein Pinball. Cool. Check out these classic pinball machines. These are not for you to use, just for us to see. It's part of the pinball museum that they have here. You can see some of the characters that they have standing around. Not Again, not for us to play, but these are amazing classic antique pinball machines. Really, really impressed by every single one. Amazing back here in the back. You have to kind of find the secret door to find all these classic pinball machines. We're making our way out now, but you can see they've got tons and tons and tons of pinball all over the place. Now, along with a lot of modern ones like this James Bond one, which actually is older than some of the other ones we've seen, take a look at some of these classic ones. These are indeed available for play, but they are older, much, much older. So they're not the ones in the museum, but you can play the ones that are close to the age of the museum right here out inside of this area that's amazing that is cool baby pac-man look at this this is like so you play here and then you play pinball here that's just so cool now this is awesome right outside of pinball palace you can actually see an open pinball machine here where you can see over 3,500 parts inside of a working pinball machine that is awesome. I'm learning something I never learned before. David spotted it. Pinball was illegal in the United States, 1940s to 1970s, in most of the American big cities, New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. I don't know why. Why would that be? I don't know why that would be, but it's interesting to learn. Now in the arcade section of Deserland, you can see so many games. It's just, it's wall to wall game fun all over the place. And I love it. It's so cool. Wow, all right, we're definitely gonna start playing in just a minute. Desertland has given us a few points so we can try it ourselves and let you know what we think. Now, after you play your favorite games, you can actually win prizes based on the tickets that you have. That bird scooter up there, for example, I think is 20,000 tickets. Yeah, I think so, and I think this one over here, this uh, bike scooter is 85,000 tickets which I'd love, but I think, uh, I think we'll just play and have fun today. One of our favorites to play together, Tank Tank Tank, as a four-player game? Oh yeah, I think we're gonna try this in just a minute. I've never seen a dice game quite like this before. You spin it, and you, uh, you have a chance to play Monopoly Roll. You have to, obviously have to scan but very cool. Now, while you're playing, you have the opportunity to recharge, buy more, or just get one of those cards so you can play some of these games. You have these dispensers all over the place. You just start and you can uh, just see what your current balance is, recharge card as you're playing. All right, Dave and I are gonna start it here at Tank, Tank, Tank. Let's see how we do. All right, it's time to play Tank, Tank, Tank. I always love this game. The fact that we get to play together, I think is the uh, best part. We've never made it past the third level on Tank, Tank, Tank before. Don't forget what the, the upgrade is. We got the first level. Okay, it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if I can get a lot of tickets here. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, that bouncy ball. Getting to the jackpot. Oh my gosh, it was so close to the jackpot. 15 tickets. Not bad. All right, it's time to play Sonic Olympic Games. That was a great game. I was surfing with Mario. Loved it. Okay, here it comes, mode of truth, and fire. Oh, trying to go for that super bonus. That's tough. Going for that bonus again. Let's see if I can get it. Oh my gosh, it's tough to get. Oh, it's near the, oh, I went for the one. Oh, so close to that bonus. I take a motorcycle through Yosemite. I'm on the Tron Lightning Cycle, and I love it. Pretty great game, right there? It seems pretty good. You're here doing 
the shootout, like Jurassic, but with uh, Transformers. We're still pretty full health. Yeah, we're all good. Bug catcher achievement. You see that? Yeah. I got left, I got left. Oh! Yeah! Oh, you got me on that one. 100 tickets. Yeah! Basketball time. Oh, there's one. There's two. Not that one. Three. David's playing the beanbag toss here. He's going for, oh, a thousand. There you go. Two, th three thousand. All right, let's see if I'm any good at the slots game where we try and get the guy. Oh. Eight. And, oh, the guy. Yeah. Does that win anything? Eight tickets, all right. Dave and I are playing House of the Dead 4. It's a very intense shooting game with uh, many uh, SMGs, I think we're holding our hands. But lots of fun. Woo! Great way to end it with tank, tank, tank. And you know, I won that one. As we're making our way out here, we're gonna check out the gift shop real fast. And apparently they've got some uh, cars in here that are actually part of the museum, but here in the gift shop. Oh my gosh, I think this is the smallest car ever made. Check out this one. I recognize it from Top Gear. That is so cool. It's the micro car. Offers over $50,000 will be considered. That is so cool. A lot of Orlando merchandise all over, just like General Orlando, along with some Disney, of course, just celebrating everything around here. Truly an incredible experience here inside Desertland. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed seeing all the amazing cars, go-karting, checking out some of the axe throwing, the food was delicious, and of course, the arcade games were a lot of fun. This is a place I can definitely see myself coming back to in the future, especially when it's raining outside. It's all indoors, and I love that, I absolutely do. We'll be back, you could spend all day just in this car part alone. Thanks again to Desertland and to Experience Kiss Me for inviting us out and showing us this amazing experience here in Central Florida. Thanks so much for being a part of the magic with me today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Now I'm gonna jump in my car and head on my way. Thanks everybody, have a magical day.